Uh, today we're going to talk about some work and research programs along with my team work and I, and also about some colleagues. But I'm going to focus mainly on the reconstructions of the universe. And uh, I'm also going to focus on the dark energy all. Right? So I'm going to skip most of the cosmological basis. I'm going to just start saying like the cosmological constant or the standard cosmological model has some problem. We have seen a lot about those problems commonly called the age mutations, also some minor problems like the PNO uh, galaxies and, and Lyman mutations, and of course some the theoretical problems like the coincidence problem or the functioning problem. And of course, in order to release these tensions or to just ameliorate these problems, we need to go a little bit, uh, uh, we need to take a, a step forward for the cosmological constant and to take into account uh, new features. And of course, we need to add these additional features because we don't know anything about this dark energy component. Or we can call it multiple gravity or it could be anything else. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna take any part of this uh, about the which model it is. So of course, the, there's a long list about all the possibilities interacting with dark energy we have seen before. Um, there's f of r, f of q, f of t, and uh, a lot of functions that we, we have seen in the poster session. And also, we have been working on the scalar field scenario. Uh, perhaps you might hear tomorrow something about uh, some, some, something about these, these models by Nikon, or some, some, something about these models on the poster session by Gabriel as well. And in order to take this additional feature, features, the simplest way, and perhaps the basic one, is to take just phenomenological functions. For instance, the equation of the state for, for the dark energy. But it could be something else as well. It could be the dark energy uh, density. It could be the interacting kernel. It could be the scalar field scenario. Or it can be any other function, even, for, for instance, the magnitude of the supernovae. And of course, there's a long list of models of parameterization in order to describe the properties of the dark energy. However, by selecting one particular parameterization, it may cause some misleading results. Because, for instance, if I select this parameterization and then it turns out in the future the dark energy is described by these other functions, it would be very complicated to describe this one in terms of the previous one. So once we select a particular parameterization, not only for the dark energy, well, not only for the question of the state, for any particular function, we might create some problems or, or some bias. So in order to take another approach, we decided to go on the other way around. Instead of suggesting a particular function, giving its three parameters and then putting it into the cause and looking at the observation, we might look at the other side, or the other way around. So we take the data, different probe, different uh, uh, CMB observation, Pantheon, all the data sets available, and then we ask the data which is the preferred function in order to describe this data directly. Right? So in, in sort of cartoonish way, I put some amplitudes here, and perhaps the position are able to move. And these points or these nodes are able to, to be interpolated by any, basically any function, a linear interpolation of Splunk, Gaussian process, artificial neural networks, or any other process. And we let the data to decide which is the function that is the most prepared by the observations. Right? So we can somehow describe the non-parametric functional form of the equation of the state or any other uh, observable. One example of this was taken a uh, long time ago, actually in 2012, that we were asking about the preferred power spectrum. So at that time, the preferred power spectrum, the preferred model was the Harrison Seldovic, that is NS equal 1 or uh, unscaling variant. And we were using this type of techniques in order to reconstruct the shape of the, this spectrum. And I, I believe at that time we used WMAP 9 or some, some WMAP. But you can see from here, the preferred shape of this spectrum is something like a Roni. Or at least, it prefers by, by, by a lot. 
something different than the Harrison pseudovic. So now that you know the Harrison pseudovic is already ruled out. And uh, also we found that the running, it was slightly preferred compared to the running to, to the spectral index of the uh, of the power spectrum, of the primordial power spectrum. So this type of techniques allows to describe or to localize the best position if there is any turnaround, if there is, we don't need the pivot point in order to describe, describe the global structure of this spectrum. And of course, later on came Dr. Mark uh, Planck, and at that time we didn't have enough information in order to describe the equation of the state or any other uh, characteristics for the dark energy. And this type of techniques, this type of, of mechanism, were very really useful, and in fact some of the collaborations used uh, similar ones, uh, for instance, the camera for small telescope, uh, and in fact, the plan 2013, 15, and 18, they started using these techniques because they already had, of course, plan. Now, we need to wait in, until the CMB4 stage in order to, to see whether this shape is preserved or is going to be favored by the running or the running of the running in the spectral index. But once uh, we decided to apply a similar technique, to the reconstruction of the equation of state. Because somehow, the spec, the Hamilton Seldonic is sort of analogous to the cosmological constant. So the first step was to see whether the, this cosmological constant was prepared or ruled out. And we applied, of course, a similar technique. And if we are uh, very optimistic, we can, we can see from here a small shape of the equation of the state, right? It's, it's a little bit less than one, and the takes a peak over here. Of course, we had at that time Pantheon 2, or not sorry, Union 2, or some or very old data sets. But the technique was already very working, at least. And then, uh, okay, but this, is, this was also applied by using the multiness. I think this was the first time to use the multiness in order to to penalize for the extra information or for the extra parameters that incorporate into this reconstruction. Right. And then we look at again a couple of years later, and the multiness wasn't working pretty well because we had a lot of parameters. Once plan came out, we had a, a nuisance parameters, and then we also performed a similar reconstruction using uh, more information, uh, plan. But also realized that the uh, multiness wasn't working pretty well, and that at that time it was created the, the polyform as well. We didn't have a lot of information. We, we still had some uh, uh, very uh, high signal uh, data for the supernovae. Uh, however, a couple of years later, within the most collaboration, we had a lot of information, we have more techniques, we applied the this by library, we had the uh, spinning technique <coughs> with our correlation functions, and we were able to produce this plot. And this is a very simple plot, but I think it's, it's very interesting. First, it has a preference about 3, 3.5 for sigma for the dynamic of dark energy. That is, the cosmological constant is in trouble now. And a second point to mention or to stress out here, is this equation of the state is able to cross this phantom divide line. And even in many occasions, if this shape continues in the future, that means the scalar fields are going to be in trouble. For instance, quintessence, quintessence lives over here, and phantom lives over here, and they, not, they are not able to cross from this phantom divide line. Right? So with this particular form, we are able to somehow being very optimistic to rule out the cosmological constant and single canonical scalar fields. One of the problems, or one of the questions that emerged at that time was if this shape is dependent on the type of reconstructions, on the type of the building, on the type of the technique, on the type of the data set used as well. So we started doing some alternative reconstructions, and the first one, and probably the, the most basic one, after the, the CPL, the Taylor expansion, was just to use a full Fourier series function. And with much less parameters, we were able to recover a similar, a similar form, right? 
In this case, we have about 30 bins, and in this case, we have only about three or four parameters with different bases. Uh, of course, I didn't mention the, the guy square. Today, it's a, an improvement significant, and it's not penalized a lot by the inclusion of extra parameters because here we have only like two or three extra parameters uh, with respect to the numbers. Also, we test different combination of parameters, and in that particular case, we test the, the Pantheon uh, compared with the SDSS in order to see if they are consistent or not. Then, uh, uh, well, more recently, we apply a similar technique in order to constrain, again, the equation of the state, but we, we decided to focus on the dark energy density. Well, this equation of the state, you can see, it looks very similar to the previous ones. Here also, we use the principal component analysis in order to decide which of the parameters provided the most information, right? So we don't select only randomly the parameters. We need to select how, how many parameters are in which, which positions they're going to be. Also, well, this is the reconstruction of the dark energy density. And you can see a particular feature. One is a, this wiggly behavior. It's, it's, it's not statistically significant. But this behavior is able to explain the video data. You can see from here the galaxy video data, the Langman alpha data, and of course the guy square is preferred by about six or four, I don't remember, by about six or seven for the video data by itself. And also an interesting quantity we can look here is a zero or almost crossing this line for negative dark energy intensities. Which is very unusual, but here is just a phenomenological model. We are asking about the data, where is the preferred form for this uh, dark energy density. And of course, the crossing of this line, or the crossing of the, uh, or, or reaching the uh, dark energy density at zero, produces a fault in the equation of the state if we interpret this, this uh, function as a parotropic perfect fluid. There, are, there have been a lot of papers recently about the negative energy density for the equation of the state. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the, the phenomenology behind the, this possible model, but there have been a lot of papers trying to explain or trying for getting a similar form for this row C. And also, a couple of years ago, we also uh, work on this uh, particular model, which is called the graduated dark energy, which produces a transition from a positive cosmological constant to a negative one, right? And this, only this transition is able to explain a set of tensions about mainly the Lyman alpha and the galaxies, but also to alleviate several tensions like the H0, CMA, uh, uh, amongst many others. And also, well, th there's going to be a talk tomorrow, and you can see more, more about this, this particular model. <coughs> and if the scalar fields are going to perhaps be ruled out in the future, I think it's also time to take, to take into account a multiple scalar fields that are, are able to cross this phantom debate line and also producing this wiggly behavior. And depending on this coupling parameter, if it's positive or negative, it's also going to produce either a ball in the equation of the state produced by a negative dark energy density or this wiggling behavior among many others. And just to take one, one function yes, to, for the potential. Uh, of course, if, if we, we can avoid this type of functions and reconstruct the functional form as well. Also for the potential, we can, do, we can perform a similar reconstruction as we did previously. And also, even more recently, we look at the interaction curve, right? We just ask, okay, if there is a negative dark energy density, is that produced by any physical model that can map that physical, physical model into a non-physical uh, dark energy density? And the answer basically was this, this one. We reconstruct with similar techniques 
the kernel of well, this, this kernel of the, the interaction. And here, well, you can see everything is statistically consistent with the lambda sphere, but there are again some, some wiggling behavior. And as a derived parameter, we were able to produce this uh, dark energy, and it also crosses the line of zero. Therefore, there is also a ball here. Um, and this may explain a lot of uh, data sets. And also, you can see that the, the poster outside of the corridor. And nowadays, by using these machine learning techniques, we will also be able to uh, produce some reconstructions of several functions. Uh, I just put two here. Um, oh, well, we can reconstruct either the data, the functional form behind, or we can use these uh, artificial neural, neural networks in order to speed up the calculations. We can also do, uh, of course, the, the classifications. But one big problem we realize is the selection of the architecture of the network. Right? There are many calculations, there, there are many permutations we need to take into account. So one step we can just imagine is to take a grid. If we take a grid with the all possibilities of the layers, nodes, rate, batch size, or even the activation functions, we need to compute all these possibilities in order to select one artificial, artificial neural network in order to provide the optimal architecture. Instead of taking this route, we ask the genetic algorithm. The genetic algorithms are very good by finding uh, optimal, uh, uh, the optimum of the functions. Yeah. It could find the optimal structure of this architecture and it could optimize the architecture by one order of magnitude with about a half of number of evaluations, which is a lot of uh, uh, computational time if we take it. If we take into account that each realization of this is going to evaluate the architecture of the neural network and compute the mean square error. So the genetic algorithms are, very, are a very good tool in order to implement the optimal architecture for the network. And also very recent, we were able to speed up the calculations of the nested sampler. With these genetic algorithms, we were able to construct the artificial network, neural network in order to train the calculations of the likelihoods. So also, in order to produce the, the life points or the training data, we use, again, these genetic algorithms instead of random samples. That helps a lot. Once we build the artificial neural network, we train the likelihood. The likelihood was instead of being computed numerically, it was just evaluated, and we had some checkpoints. If at this point the accuracy is well enough, the network continues. If it's not well enough, it's already trained with these genetic algorithms and continues once again. We can check the accuracy at any point we want in order to speed the process up, and some of the preliminary results are these ones. Uh, you can see this is the, the multi-nest or polycorn or any other nested sampler compared with the network already trained by this genetic algorithm. And it helps us to save about 20-30% of time, which is a lot uh, uh, nowadays. And just to finish, and to wrap it up, if we move a little bit a step away from this Bayesian evidence or these parameter estimations, by using these techniques or similar ones, we can also analyze the numerical simulations. We can build a neural network, in this case it's going to be a, a convolutional neural network, in order to map the particles that enter up forming a, a halo. <coughs> so with this type of techniques, we also can somehow reconstruct the halo mass function, and nowadays we are training in order to find or to localize some halos within these uh, numerical simulations instead of the rock star halo hanger. So these techniques are very useful, and you can see, of course, about, uh, about uh, more in detail in Isidro's poster, Isidro's posters, and also you can see a lot of the code and the software in the GitHub and also in the Isidro's GitHub. And I'm going to stop here. <laughs> Right.
nature is from starting to change where it's looking at it's reconstructing things in W. Right? So you kind of get negative dark energy densities there, yeah. right? So they're deprecated. And the other thing there is that those correlations are assumed. You put the correlations in by hand. So there's a later paper by Gong Bo Zhao and yes. Lisa, where basically they reconstruct X, which is the dark energy density in sure. instead of W. Again, they're assuming correlations. And what those correlations actually do is they preclude the quintessence models sure. from the beginning. So it's not that you are finding the quintessence models are ruled out. You've ruled them out by the setup. Right. Your setup actually overfits the data. That, that's why we try different techniques. In order to avoid this correlation. It's overfitting data. No, I mean, we can look at the, the basic evidence as well. Um, the number of parameters. So in the second paper, which is the follow-up paper by Devin and, and Congo, the Bayesian evidence always prefers to have the CDM unless you basically take some very unnatural priors. <laughs> you have to really squeeze your priors to find these reconstructions that are paying to have the CDM. And so what's interesting is if you look at how Nevin and Gungo's work has progressed, recently they worked with Alessandra and some investors, and what they're doing is actually now incorporating theory priors into their reconstructions because if you don't, you get all these wiggles, and those wiggles are just artifacts that are reconstruction. Also, we try to different number of pins, start from 1 up to 20, in order to see how the basic evidence is penalized by adding extra information. You should be very careful with the right? Especially testing EFTs. Yeah, right. Any other questions, comments? So, of course, we thank you very much again.